One of my pet peeves is the sound of brake rub. When you stand up out of the saddle and you hear a tss, 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 as the wheels drag through the brake pads. But what causes this? Is it the wheels flexing or the frame? When I ask companies, I get a lot of this. The bike companies say it's the wheels, the wheels companies blame the frame. To put some measurements on these things, I took a few sets of wheels and two frames to Microback Lab here in Boulder, Colorado. Microback engineer Richie Trent measures wheel stiffness in a couple ways. One, he takes a 56 pound load and presses on the rim laterally and then measures how much that rim moves, what the lateral reflection is under that load. He's done this test for Velanus and others, so I had him do this for four wheels. And I also asked him to measure not just at the point of the load, but at the opposite side of the wheel. The thinking being that the load is effectively coming up from the road, but what I'm interested in is how much the wheel is moving as it's going through the brake calipers. So again, 56 pounds applied here, pressed down, and that same uh, measurement taken on the opposite side of the wheel. He tested four wheels for us, a Zip 404, an Envy uh, 4.5 set, a Head Jet 6, and the Hit Single, which is a wheel from a new consumer direct brand uh, called Hi-Fi out of Portland, Oregon. So here is how they did. Now note the Head and the Zip moved about a millimeter, and the Hi-Fi and Envy about two millimeters. Now notice that there's two measurements here. The larger of the two is how much the wheel is moving where it's being loaded. And the second is the one I'm more interested in is how much the wheel is moving on the opposite side of the wheel uh, at the brake caliper. Now for reference, the space between the brake pad and the brake track is usually about two millimeters on a normal road bike. Now the beauty of rim brake bikes is you can adjust these things on the fly. Uh, for your personal preference on where the lever will engage or just how much wiggle room you have in between the pad and the wheel. Now, I've seen many riders, including top pros like Alberto Contador, messing with their rim calipers at the bottom of a climb so they can stand up and not hear that dreaded tss -tss -tss. Now, here is how the rear wheels did. Again, note that there's two numbers, and we're interested in the second number, which is how much the wheel deflects on the opposite side of where the load is placed. Now, a couple takeaways here. One is that there is no fixed correlation or relation between how much a wheel moves uh, where it's loaded and how much it moves on the other side. There's a few things at play here. There's the stiffness of the rim itself, uh, and then there's also the, the build of any of these given wheels, the spoke tension, the hub flange diameter, a lot of physics going on. But main takeaway is that even if you have very calibrated hands, how much a rim moves when you wiggle it will not tell you how much uh, brake rub you're going to get. Okay, so three of the wheel sets are full carbon clinchers. Uh, this head wheel is basically a box section alloy wheel uh, with a fairing on top. Now this moved the least laterally, which surprised me, because it's the most comfortable to ride. And because it was a comfortable wheel to ride, I thought it would be uh, flexible also. I was wrong. This is why we test. Relatedly, uh, in talking to bike engineers and wheel engineers, they say that box section wheels are less likely to give you brake rub on the whole, there's always exceptions, uh, compared to a full carbon wheel with a really deep rim. Uh, just because that, that, that stiff structure uh, is more likely to transmit the movement from one side of the wheel to the other. So that was a surprising takeaway for me. Now for frames, I took two bikes in to Microback, both frames that I've spent a lot of time on. A Specialized Tarmac, which is a great all-around bike, and a Scott Foil, the older style, uh, which is the bike that I often race on. So for the frame test, Richie took a steel bar, put it in the dropouts, and then extended another steel bar out to try to replicate the world's stiffest wheel. And he put on that same 56 pound load, applied in the same direction, to see how much the frame would move, measured there at the caliper. Now here I was pleased to see that my suspicions about how the foil and the tarmac would perform uh, proved true, and that the foil is much stiffer than the tarmac at the rear end. Now again, remember the, your typical space between a brake pad 
and the brake track is about two millimeters. Another thing to keep in mind is that the 56 pound load, when applied perfectly perpendicularly to your bike, uh, is fairly extreme and is only something you're going to see in the real world when you're aggressively rocking the bike side to side, like when you're s very slowly climbing something that's very steep or you're sprinting. Now, if you're getting brake rub, I suggest you can try swapping wheels with your friends and see if that changes your results. Just remember to keep that distance between the brake pad and the brake track the same so you're testing apples to apples. Another thing you can do before a sprint or before a steep climb if you're on a Shimano bike or another bike with an adjustable uh, brake caliper is reach down and open it up a little bit before that. Just remember to shut it down afterwards.